Okay, would everyone please turn off your cell phones and electronic devices and please rise for a moment of silence for the deceased county employees, Tony Tascara and Tara Knight, and then the pledge of flag. Honestly, Ekis, Amo, here, Nagnostakis, here, Benton, here, Berkman, here, Benelli, here, Cheney, here, Dillard, here, DeSalvo, present, Hines, here, Chemnitz, here, Kulasek, here, Paduk, here, Ruskevich, here, Sullivan, here, Turnbull. Here. Bureau. Here. Wong. Here. Freshen. 19, President, one absent. I'd like to welcome the students for youth and government today. And uh, I'd like to thank Interim Chairwoman, Legislator Katie Benelli, for chairing a uh, engaging and spirited conversation up on the stage. It was very enlightening. Um, everybody, the gentleman from uh, Chester got everybody's attention when he said legalize weed the, right off the bat. <laughs> You know, and they said it wasn't a, a county issue, but it, in, in some measure it is. Just like the casino issue we debated last year in Youth and Government Day, um, we do uh, we can always memorialize a state, and uh, we do have a couple potential medicinal medicinal <laughs> marijuana sites looking to locate in Orange County, wherein we can derive tax benefits, uh, but it's strictly for medicinal purposes. So, um, but uh, that was it was definitely. <laughs> Too many times? <laughs> uh, but it was fun and, and uh, talked a lot about privatization. They wanted to privatize everything. I think it was unanimous. So I was waiting for them to get to privatizing and consolidating the legislature. But thank God we didn't get that far today. And the gentleman that was set over on the end was pretty good when he said, uh, what did he say? Don't talk about layoffs. We could have used him last year, right? But, uh, but thank you for coming up on stage. We have Adam Zimmerman, who was the chairperson, I guess, chairman. Did a good job. You didn't leave a lot of gaps like me, which is a good thing. And Miss uh, Olivia Spoto, is it? Soto. Okay, I stand corrected. Thank you for coming today again. Okay, uh, public participation. We only have about three or four signed up, I believe. Uh, first up is Vince Berry on item number nine on the agenda. From Walker. Good morning. There's no citation of law, regulation, or ruling of any government body within this resolution that justifies the diversion of federal FEMA money for a purchase other than the use of said money for the repair and or uh, reconst reconstruction and renovation of the Orange County Government Center for which the FEMA funds were awarded. While FEMA policy 9525.13 allows alternative projects, those alternative projects are allowed only if 44 CFR parts 9 and 10 are complied with. 44 CFR 9.8 clearly identifies a process of public notice and participation when wetlands and floodplains are affected. This process has not taken place, and the county's own CEPRA document identifies impacts to wetlands and floodplains. Additionally, Title 40 of the NEPA, the National Environmental Protection Act, named NPE, NEPA and Agency Planning, paragraph 1501.7, requires, requires public scoping for actions that affect known wetlands and floodplains. I therefore demand that this resolution be withdrawn as illegal under circumstances because of regulatory deficiencies and omissions and if not withdrawn, I suggest that it be voted down by as many sensible and honest legislators as necessary to defeat the proposed legislation. Pending DEC action on the requirement for an individual speedies permit at the Orange County Government Center worksite, a section, nine, uh, section 106 compliance process relative to the National Historic Preservation Act will be required. And these funds will be needed to facilitate the full renovation of the historic Paul Rudolph Orange County Government Center. 
Site plans have been deliberately withheld from the DEC and public scrutiny, thus constituting a deliberate act of falsification of records necessary to be submitted for a speedy's permit application. The reservation and withholding of necessary material is falsification and illegal under DEC regulations. Further, the scheme to segment part of the Orange County Government Center project to falsely minimize ultimate regulated soil disturbance is also illegal. By law, the project must be considered in its entirety at full build out. These two acts are felonies under applicable DEC law and subject to criminal prosecution. Next speaker, Dorothy Winter, uh, bond resolutions 8 through 16. Slay Hill, New York. I'd like to read you a quote from Martin Luther King that's posted on the middle school of Minnesink Valley. It speaks to ethical behavior by legislators and in particular to the bond resolution that Mr. Ferry just discussed. Never, never be afraid to do what is right, especially if the well-being of a person or animal is at stake. Society's punishments are small compared to the wounds we inflict on our soul when we look the other way. People have been hurt recently in Illinois by a tornado that destroyed their community and killed people. We are taking FEMA money and putting it toward construction vehicles, probably illegally, when this money could be redirected and used for people who have been hurt. Next speaker, Madeline Shaw, Slate Hill on item number nine. Vincent and Dottie have been very eloquent in their presentations and I certainly agree with everything that they said. Um, I am here to speak to the air quality that is going to be terribly, terribly um, awful if, if these buildings are taken down, if the building is taken down. And I agree with, with Dottie saying that this money should not be spent for vehicles. It should be spent for, for something positive. And I would ask that you, if you can do it today, would be great to do an override of the veto to at least investigate the possibility of the utilization of the building without all of this construction, without the hundreds, the millions and millions of dollars that are going to be spent unnecessarily, the pollution of the air, and the destruction of, whether you like it or not, a work of art. It is criminal, and this legislature is going to be looked at very carefully by anybody who has any kind of cultural sense about what's going on here. This is a protected building and I ask that you please respect that and at least investigate possibilities for use before you demolish. Thank you. Thank you. We have four proclamations today on the agenda. I'd like to invite up the county executive and his counterpart who are gonna be part of three of the proclamations. For the first, I'd like to invite up uh, Mary, Spe uh, Mary Spear from Washingtonville on behalf of John Spear, Everett Smith, uh, legislator Matt Turnbull who represents uh, John and knows John very well, and Katie Benelli, who also knows John very well. Oh, the camp, oh, Adam, you come up with me too, I'm sorry. While the chairman's uh, coming down here and everybody's coming to the uh, front, I'd like to introduce Spencer, who is a Middletown uh, high school junior and uh, a leader in his community. We had a lot of fun this morning. Uh, I, we got the tail end of the uh, legislative students. You, you got a lot accomplished, and uh, I encourage you to stay involved. You really are the hope for the future. So uh, I'm honored to be here today. Uh, we have four proclamations, as uh, the chairman said. And uh, the first one goes to my friend John Spear. And uh, I, I have to say there's probably, you can count um, maybe one or two publications in Orange County that really are community newspapers that print, Eagle Scouts, confirmations, 
good, positive community things, things that highlight our students, uh, highlight our, our seniors, our veterans. Uh, Everett Smith does it, and the Orange County Post, I think, really uh, coined it. And, and John, uh, I am so honored to be here in your presence. I'm gonna read a couple things, and I know we have a, a bunch of people who want to say things uh, about you. Uh, your wife and Everett helped us with these, and I got one, um, one wow factor at the end from another friend of yours. So uh, the, the certificate and the resolution uh, honoring uh, John Spear on a lifetime of achievement, uh, whereas John uh, Spear has been a fixture of Orange County community for decades, serving others in a variety of leadership capacities and enhancing our quality of life. And whereas John Spear is a graduate of St. Thomas Elementary School in Cornwall, St. Patrick's High School, and Rochester Institute of Technology International School of Printing, where he finished first in his class. And whereas Mr. Spear has served as editor, publisher, and columnist at the Orange County Post, published in Vail's Gate, and whereas Mr. Spear has served as the director of the CYO program for 50 years, including coaching girls and boys teams and building a gym for St. Mary's CYO team in 1974, and whereas in addition to these community activities, he has served for 50 years on the Village of Washington Planning Board, Washington, 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 Washingtonville, sorry, Planning Board. Now, I am friends with a friend of yours, John, uh, his name is Father Jeff Maurer, and we have 50 years and we have all these different years. He said, though, you have served daily mass for 60 years. And, and uh, he, I talked to him early this morning. Uh, he told me to give you a shout out and, and say congratulations. Obviously, you're going to see him very soon anyway, if you continue the tradition. Uh, but we really, on behalf of the whole county, I am so honored to stand here with you. Uh, I, I loved sir, when, when I saw you per periodically in Chester when you covered some of the veterans events and reading the uh, publication and wonderful, wonderful stuff that you would cover, a true community oriented person and somebody that really has changed lives for the better in Orange County. So, John, thank you. You get the last word. So, this is it. So, Chairman? Yes, you absolutely get the last word. John, uh, I'm glad the county exec uh, brought this proclamation to us and initiated it. Um, you know, can't say enough about you and your family. I mean, your, your family name is synonymous with community service in Washingtonville, um, you know, and other involvement, whether it's the retail lumber business, something I can relate to, uh, youth sports, journalism. You've done so much, an altruistic family, um, and I'm glad you made it today. We, we weren't sure if you were going to come. Um, we're very proud to have you on behalf of the legislature. Katie and Matt would certainly like to say something on your behalf, too. They know you well, and uh, thank you for all you've done in your lifetime and your family to the county. Good morning, and it's obviously quite an honor to be able to stand here and recognize and thank an individual that when I moved to Orange County in 1978, whether he knew it or not, he was publishing a very local little newspaper and it got me familiar with my community. And then it, when I entered public life as a candidate in 1991, I, I obviously worked very closely with John Spear, and he was very, very helpful because it was my first time around. For those of you that aren't familiar with our area, John is running around all the time. He's on his bike, hopping that back and forth, and his column is named very apropos just wandering around. You could always find John at any local event that there was going to be. And many times John may be running late, but if he was running late, we knew that we had to wait a few minutes until he, his camera on his bike, came and visited us, because that was a true testament as to what was going on in our little community in Washingtonville. So John, your family, and I see friends are here, Mary from Chester, who worked very closely with you, I, I just want to congratulate you, and from my heart, I thank you very, very much for all your contributions to our community. Thank you. My, my wife often tells me, try not to be so long-winded, but I have to tell you that I, I could talk for a long time about this gentleman. Um, you know, I just found out this morning that he, he was being honored and I started thinking about the history, the long relationship, 
uh, all through CYO basketball. <clears throat> you know, the kids are up here today. We watched the kids, and everybody probably had the same feeling I had, that uh, the future is in good hands. And one of the reasons that our kids are doing so well is the behind-the-scenes type of work that men like John Spear have been involved in. With little fa fa fanfare, uh, little credit, uh, I, I just think about the effect it's had on many, many young gentlemen that I know that instead of being out in the streets, hanging on the corner, and doing things they shouldn't be, do, be doing, they're on the basketball court. And the best example I have of that is my own son, who played CYO basketball for many, many years, and they had this wonderful arrangement to CYO where the, the parent could coach, and you could have your son on your own team. Well, I have to tell you that uh, all of the uh, growing up that I had to do in those years happened very often as a result of being a coach. Um, but I have to share something, and I'm sure John isn't even aware of this, that you know, after my son, my son went to play varsity basketball as a sophomore. You know, that's how good he got. I, when he was a kid, I said, if, you know, if you're gonna play basketball, you have to learn to dribble and have a good shot because it's very unlikely that you're gonna be tall like your dad. Uh, he ended up being 6'6". Six, six. Um, but he went on to college. After he graduated from college, I said, you know, son, sports are great, but they don't pay the bills. So, you know, you gotta get a job. What are you gonna do now? And, you know, he looked at me very innocently and just said, well, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna go work for ESPN. I almost laughed at his face. I said, well, you know, go ahead. You could try that. That's a good idea. I'll be darned if he didn't get a job working for ESPN. And I'm watching the Final Four the other night, and I'm sitting there in my chair in my home looking at my son in the front row with his earphones on, working for ESPN. And it occurs to me this morning that a lot of, a lot of the credit those accomplishments, although I always take all the credit, a lot of the credit goes to this gentleman over here, John. Thank you. Thank you for your service. I was, there, there was one thing. Uh, this wasn't really all, all our idea. This was Everett Smith. Uh, I ran into Everett a couple weeks ago, and I said, uh, I, we want to do something for John. How do we make it happen? And you made it happen. So Everett, I don't know if you or Mary want to come up, obviously, and say, say a few words, and, and John. I'll say, uh, I'll say a few. <laughs> uh, when, when this was first being discussed, um, uh, Steve Newhouse asked me if I could come up with some bullets uh, for the proclamation or uh, whatever we're coming up with today. So I called Mary Spear up. and. Uh, she gave me maybe a half a dozen, I would say, uh, different things to, to come up with. And the last thing that she said was, I can't possibly keep up with John. So to remember 50 some odd years of public service is almost impossible. And I can tell you, I know of things that John has done uh, that the public will never know. And I'm sure that that can be multiplied by hundreds. And when you look at John and you think of all the things he's done, 50 years being the director of the CYO with all of those kids, being on the planning board, all of the things that he's publicly done, imagine the amount of lives he has affected during his life. Uh, and made a positive effect on it. It's mind-boggling if, if we could all only touch the amount of lives that John has touched in his life. It would be phenomenal. Uh, he's, he's been a, a fantastic um, individual in the town of Washingtonville, in the county of Orange, and in the lives of so many people. And I just want to uh, I'm honored to have been part of this job. Mary, would you like to say a few words? Well, 
Members of the Orange County Legislator, I want to personally thank you for recognizing John Spear. He's a wonderful member of our county who has volunteered his entire life to better his hometown of Washingtonville through his years of service on the planning board, other committees, but also by helping many organizations and people in need through his newspaper, the Orange County Post. On behalf of John, I'm going to read the next item because I've been with him on a few things and he always makes sure he makes this point. I would also like you to recognize his wife, Mary, who has been at his side and has held down the fort at home while John was working and volunteering their entire marriage. How appropriate that this recognition is taking place today during Youth in Government Day, since John is best known, loved, and respected for his dedication to helping the youth of Washingtonville and the surrounding communities through the CYO basketball organization he came, began back in the 1950s or earlier. <coughs> I first met John in 1968 when my parents moved us from the Bronx to Orange County. He was running the CYO basketball room in Washingtonville, and me and my sisters, and many more after, joined for something to do. He went on to teach and coach numerous girls teams to many championships locally and archdiocese-wide. But most importantly, he taught them about respect, hard work, dedication, friendship, and his love of God. It is something that many of them carry throughout their life they showed it by returning to CYO to coach and be, by being involved in their communities. There is hardly a person in Washingtonville area that does not know or respect John. His love of God is shown every day in his actions as he attends Mass daily. His concern for the youth continues even over his own health. He has kept the cost of registration in the program very low by having families participate by coaching, refereeing, cleaning, working, the hard bingo, or to show them also that they need to be involved in their children's lives. On a personal note, I played CYO. That's how long ago he started this. My three children played, my daughter coached, my husband learned to be a referee, and I worked for John Spear for nine years prior to coming here to the county. Thank you, John, for me and my family. Mrs. Spears, you want to say a few words? Yeah. Mary? I think you've covered it all. It's just John's a hard act to follow. Mine will be about as brief as Mary's. None of this would have been possible first without my parents. They set the groundwork. Uh, they actually donated the property for the CYO gym. And um, secondly, as everybody's already commented, absolutely impossible without Mary at my side. Well, thank you for everything. I just did it because I'd like to. <laughs> so, John, we just got a uh, proclamation we'd like to uh, pose whatever. This is your business, buddy. You got to now talk and you have to, uh, <laughs> and, and the chairman, of course, I'm sorry. An Ever, altar boy. So Ever has a, uh, John's an altar boy? <laughs> John is still serving as an altar boy. No kidding. Wow. Incredible. Mary, come up closer to please. And John. Got the paparazzi with you. Today. <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations again. Thank you, Evan. Let me take my sheet of music here. Please come up. Debbie DeJong, Associate Director of Mental Health Association. Nadia is the director. And the speaker is Jason Orzel. We always had, we had 
Is Jason here? We're on autism. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Okay, we're doing, I'm sorry, I wasn't specific enough. So. Jason's picking up the to torch for Dominic, who did it for many years. Um, thank you for coming in and making us aware each and every year of uh, what autism is all about and, and what we should uh, understand and expect and, and uh, certainly work with your community on. Uh, do you want to speak first? Good morning, everyone. I'm Nadja, the Living Health Association. We provide a, a series and um, incredible um, services to individuals with autism for many years. But we've been partnering with the Autism Over Town of Orange County, which is a group of parents of individuals um, that have uh, children in the spectrum. And um, I would be remiss if we did not ask for one of the leaders of AMOC to come and say a few words. And she's going to be introducing uh, her son, Jason, who's going to be speaking this year. Uh, on behalf of all the individuals with autism. So he stays here, so please come to the board. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nadja. Most of you know me, it's hard to uh, not hold strong, but I'm very proud mom today. At the dinner table last night, This is our young son, Eric. My husband is on camera. Hi, Brian, thank you for coming. Many of you may be familiar with seeing this around the community. I work as an advocate for the New York State Department of Health, and we put this program together many years ago to help empower other families that may have a thought, recognizing a flag of possible autism within their own family. Last night, I was taught an important lesson that Brian reminded me of many years ago. Whose need is it? We would like to have Eric here with us today, but it was Eric's need to go to school. On Friday morning, Eric wakes up, puts on this tie-dye still, with his Lightning McQueen pants, because he's routine, and goes to school. When I told him he would have a half-day opportunity today, he wasn't comfortable with that. A few nights ago, we made a speech rehearsal, and last night, he wasn't in agreement. So I made a mom decision. I asked myself, whose need is it? He was upset. He wanted to go to school. So he wasn't able to join us today, as you asked me. Was he here? Thank you, County Executive Newhouse. He is your friend. So for anyone in the audience that may not have one person that they know of that has autism, now you all know my family. So we're, we are, in fact, all one person removed from a person with autism. I'm beyond proud of the sibling Jason represents for Eric. He's a leader, he's a mentor, he's been a volunteer for our organization since he was six. Thank you for coming out to our events, Jay. But thank you more for being the best sibling you can be. Eric wouldn't be where he is today without the help of our family, but more because of what you represent to him. And Jason will tell us a little bit more about that. Sorry. Um, not only is it Autism Awareness Month, proudly, we support all the events. Our organization, the Autism Movathon of Orange County, in partnership with the Mental Health Association here in Orange County, have some events going on in the community. We raise our funds, and we're proud to report in the last 11 years, we've given out over $300,000 to families affected by autism in the county. It's magnanimous, and we are run by volunteers, mostly parents, and many others in the community. Students, we welcome volunteerism all the time. It's a great way to participate and show your commitment to your local community. Our dollars all go to families locally. There are some orange flyers on the table on the way out if you'd like to take uh, with our events listed. So we welcome you to come out and support and have fun. Our events are sensory friendly. We have a roller skating party coming up next Sunday at the castle, and next Saturday is a 5K race or a 1K walk for fun for families. That being said, I just wanna say in closing, not only is it Autism Awareness Month, today is World Sibling Day. Jason? Uh, 
Um, just real quick, I'd want to thank my mom and my dad for uh, helping me with the speech, as well as my fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Patricia Anderson. Like a seashell chooses a beach, a special child chooses a family. Hi, my name is Jay Arzell, and I'm 11, year, 11 and a half years old, and my family lives in Goshen. I'm here today to speak about families affected by autism. My little brother Eric has autism, which means he has developmental de developable delays. Otherwise, he'd be making the speech, and I'd be sitting in the crowd watching. Well, and the fact that he's only eight years old. Every one out of 68 children in the United States is affected by autism, and 51 of those are boys. Now, it's not the easiest thing to have a bro that isn't quite the typical kid, but does not make, th but it makes things different. Sometimes he teaches me things. Eric's brain is wired differently, so he doesn't always function the same way as other eight-year-old kids. For example, he uses his fork backwards, but he still gets the food in his mouth. In addition, it's hard for him to listen to people that are asking him something, and it's harder for to find family activities that we can all do. Eric often has cartoons constantly running through his head. Example, nowadays it's either Amazing World Gumball or maybe Tom and Jerry. And he would watch it, same thing about 10 times or so before changing the channel or show. It is very distracting to him. So he also, he also has food allergies, which sometimes goes along with autism. His diet is pretty restricted compared to most people. Eric is allergic to all dairy, nuts, and other foods. You can eat Uts potato chips and french fries from Burger King, or Wendy's, <laughs> but everyone loves those. His allergies are touch sensitive, so we have to police him for his safety. When we go to the movies, we have to be careful for all the buttery popcorn, chocolate, and cheesy nachos. One good thing about his autism is his amazing memory. It's called photographic or adidactic memory. You can say the alphabet backwards also. He can also play songs on our piano by just listening to them on TV or the radio. These are some of his autism superpowers. And he, he will also never, and I mean never, run out of energy. If he was here, I'm sure he'd be like running around on the stage or something. Nowadays, we are all in baseball season, and Eric's, it's Eric's first time playing. So um, me and my dad are training him. When we work on skills and drills, we have to be, break down the steps and give him a lot of reminders. Eric will always want to play with me. He once wrote in a school St. Patrick's Day project, Jay is more, worth more than a pot of gold because he plays with me. He's a great younger brother to me, and because of his autism, he has made me a great older brother to him. Because of Eric's autism, I have learned a lot about people with disabilities and differences. Having patience is very important. You can treat them, you can't treat them as if you would tr treat a typical kid. For example, Eric has trouble saying certain things that I could have said when I was his age, or that he gets distracted a lot, so he doesn't listen as well as other kids his age. Eric wants to do more of what he wants to do, not what the rest of the family wants. I and some of my friends have been volunteering for a mock autism move-a-thon of Orange County in partnership with Mental Health Association since I was six years old. And I think it's really important to suggest support people who need assistance in the community. I have met lots of people made some good, and made some good friends because of volunteering. Like the Correo family, or Ms. Correo, she's over there, and Jesse A. Saperstein. So I want to thank you for having me today. I want to ask the Orange County Legislator and everyone who is here to continue supporting laws and events uh, with, uh, about autism and other disabilities. Thank you and good day. I don't think uh, anybody can say anything more than that. And uh, Jason, thank you so much. You do a wonderful job. And uh, that's, that's how you really get the message out there. So on behalf of the county and, uh, of Orange, we have a proclamation. Actually, we'll make sure we'll go in the middle. Mom, you want to come in here with us or not?
I want to thank Nikki for taking the picture. Nikki is the liaison from Mental Health Association with uh, AMAC. And also, um, we did mention Lisa Correa, who is a very active AMAC member. So thank you for being here, Lisa. And her son has spoken uh, on different opportunities uh, for us, um, candlelight vigils and Tourette syndrome, too, which is a whole other conversation. So no, I'm thinking of somebody else. But anyway, um, so that's that for um, autism. And I guess we could uh, move along to April Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Oh, excellent. So do you want me to get started? OK. First of all, thank you, uh, both of you, Chairman. And uh, uh, Orange County is active and the legislature for giving us the opportunity to be here again this year. This is probably our 10th year doing this. Very excited about the opportunity. So I just want to mention to you just a couple of important facts about uh, sexual assault. Uh, one in every four, one in every four young girls who be sexually abused before the age of 18. Eighty percent of the survivors of uh, victims of sexual assault are under the age of 30. One in four students in college campuses, she will be sexually assaulted before her career, academic career is over. Ninety-eight percent of rapists do not serve any time in jail or prison. We, the Mental Health Association, with incredibly talented staff that provide service to our community for rape survivors, and I want to recognize them. Debbie DeYoung, uh, Ashley, Jennifer, Kathy Somerville, Tina. We have to applaud these ladies. <laughs> these individuals work 24-7, 365 days out of the year supporting individuals who have been sexually assaulted and providing support to their families and accompany them when the, the case may go to uh, prosecution. So I, I can't express enough the importance of the support that we receive uh, from Orange County government. And I do have to recognize that this year for the first time in our you know, state of the county address, uh, a county executive, yours truly, Steve Newhouse, did mention no more domestic, uh, no more domestic violence, and no more sexual assault, and standing up for the rights and uh, of women and uh, ending violence against women. So we, we really appreciate the fact that that happened. It had never happened before. So thank you. I want to say that we also have memorandums of understandings with our local schools, SUNY Orange. Um, Mount St. Mary College, we have memorandums of understanding with uh, West Point and um, National Guards and, and many other um, important um, um, uh, groups of, uh, in our community that need our services. We provide approximately 1,000 educational opportunities to our community and 568 of them is about safe dates which were provided to our middle schoolers. And I have to recognize Jennifer and Ashley that have been doing that work, particularly Jennifer. Thank you for that. So having said that, I can express enough the importance to end violence against, violence against women, and particularly in our case, we're here really to raise awareness of sexual assault. And uh, the fact that you are here supporting us today and increasing the awareness of this important issue in our community, we can't thank enough for our county government for continuing to support our program. Thank you. Just briefly, I'd like to say we have one of the best mental health teams around. The county exec saw that in the last couple of weeks. And uh, Nadia, you and Darcy and the whole team, it, you know, you keep the message out there. You enlighten the public on these important issues. And thank you very much. Uh, you know, uh, Nadia is right. We, we did bring this up in the state of the county address. Um, but it's more than talking about this. Uh, if you saw what these young ladies make, for what they do, it's embarrassing. It's truly embarrassing. Orange County government has to do more for domestic violence, sexual assaults, and a number of other important issues. And this legislative body will be addressing that with me during the budget process. It's pennies that uh, we're arguing about here that can really fill in the gap and keep supporting a critical uh, uh, cause in our society. These young ladies and the staff are the ones that are dealing with the victims. This is the team. There is no other team. This is who they're dealing with. The victims are, this, without them, the victims have nobody else. The hospitals, the first responders, 
the, the police officers, all the caseworkers, they get educated by what these uh, young ladies uh, have in their knowledge to help treat and support this important cause. Uh, one of the things Nadia and, and what we talked about was nobody likes to talk about this. It's an uncomfortable issue. But the only way we address issues like this, like autism, is by talking about them. And I know a lot of the legislators, uh, Republican and Democrat, are with me 100% on this. It's time to really start making changes here. The county executives in the Hudson Valley, Republican and Democrat, came out and supported a new cause this year for sexual assaults on campuses. She said, I think, one out of four. Only one out of 10 of those assaults, and if I'm wrong, you guys correct me, uh, are ever reported. So one of the things we wanted to do this year was expand the way that people can report these incidents so they're not maybe covered up on campus. Call another agency, somebody that you might have more faith and trust in. These are the type of things that we can do as leaders. These are the type of things we can do to change things, to make things better, to raise awareness, to prevent future victims from having to deal with it. So I am so proud to be here with you. I am proud that you are here to educate myself, my friends in the legislature, and the public. Because literally, without you being an advocate for this, we would not be able to make these changes and help people. So thank you. <laughs> we have, I think you have a wall full of these. Um, but if we would like to get your team together and see them. And if I may recognize, we also have here, I see now, Ann Klingner, who really is a huge supporter of our services and, and autism. So thank you for being here today, Annie. And also Carolyn Zell, who's our office manager and executive assistant, who supports all of these programs that we're talking about. So thank you for being here today, Carol. Picture, opportunity, so let's do sexual assault. So please. I know how busy your schedules are. I just want to thank you again for giving us the opportunity. Have a great day, everybody. Last but not least, and I tell you, uh, to the legislators, I think this is you know, this is so important that we're doing this today, and I thank you guys for allowing us, to, all of us working together, getting this done. It's important to highlight this. So, uh, animal, uh, the Prevention of Animal Cruelty Month, that's what we're going to be talking about next and honoring, and we have the Warwick Valley Humane Society here. Uh, this is a very important issue in our community. Uh, I think we just have a friend here, he just got in trouble with his wife last night, he kissed uh, someone else yesterday, we haven't seen the picture. Um, but. We, we are lucky in Orange County that we have places that are taking care of animals that are abused. Uh, we've had to use, utilize the Work Valley uh, Humane Society a number of times when I was supervisor in Chester. I don't think anybody does it better than you. Uh, Floyd DeAngelo is here from the uh, town of Warwick who helps support that as well. Uh, but we're lucky we have a district attorney in Orange County who one of his expertise, one of his areas of expertise was prosecuting uh, of animal abuse crimes. So uh, I think that not only are we honoring, uh, and I'm not trying to steal any thunder from anybody because I'm sure Mike knows more about this and, and Steve has comments as well, but I think that we are now on the horizon of really not only highlighting this, but putting in some legislation that could help the DA with the DA's influence, I believe, to change the law and make something that has real teeth and to hopefully prevent some more of these future cases. So uh, I'm going to pass the mic to Steve. and. Uh, Okay, we've got the certificate. I invited the two legislators from Warwick because I think the Warwick Humane Society seems to be one of the preeminent ones in Orange County. You have uh, Councilman Floyd D'Angelo here, and uh, you guys really, I think you stand out. I mean, you know, animal cruelty prevention is, is as American as hot ap or apple pie. You know, everybody is against cruelty to animals. I think Ulster County just did something re recently and they had a standing ovation uh, because they're going implement, to implement, excuse me, measures up there to prevent it. 
But uh, thank you, Warwick legislators, for being behind this Humane Society. Thank you for all you do. And um, who wants to say a few words? We have this proclamation. I'll read the first whereas. Whereas Orange County, the citizens of Orange County and the Warwick Valley Humane Society are concerned with the humane treatment of animals. And I'll read the last whereas, or, or cause. Throughout Orange County, and I call upon all, all Orange County residents to treat any and all animals with kindness, consideration, and respect to report the abuse, neglect, and cruelty of all animals to law enforcement agencies, their local humane society, or to the Warwick Valley Humane Society. This is uh, signed by the county exec and myself. And I'd like to ask legislator Anagnus Dacus to say a few words. It seems to be, he seems to be at the fore of this issue. He just lost a dog recently and, uh, you know, it's a issue that's near and dear to his heart. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, we're in April here and everybody knows it's Animal Provincial, uh, Cruelty Prevention Month. Um, I don't think uh, a week goes by that we don't read a story in the media, the paper, some uh, horrific act uh, perpetrated on an animal. And uh, the chairman and the executive are correct. This legislative body is going to, I think, take action. That's going to help in that respect. Um, and we'll go through that process. I want to uh, thank the chairman for allowing that process to start. I want to thank Majority Leader Bonasek for allowing that process to start. Most of all, I'd like to thank the chairman of the Rules Committee, Katie Benelli, for allowing that process to start, and we'll be able to explore it, and maybe there's some misconceptions as to what the uh, Rockies law is, uh, but we'll get in depth into it, and I'm sure we'll have a bill that's gonna help the situation, and I wanna give credit to the executive for his eventual signing of law that will help in this situation. That's the sad side of the, uh, the equation. And there's a happy side to the equation. And the happy side is the work that people like yourself and hundreds of other volunteers throughout Orange County do at the Humane Societies. Uh, yesterday I was up in Walden in my area, Steve in your area, and they've got a Humane Society there. And just to give you some numbers, last year they adopted out, and get a hold of this, 978 animals, mostly dogs and cats, to loving, caring families that's gonna allow these animals, many of them that were abused or abandoned, to have a fresh start and to have a life that's full of love and joy, which is what they deserve, because that's all they give back to us. Um, and 978 in one year, that's one society. And just so you get the scope of that, they currently, yesterday, had 123 animals there. So they housed 123, but yet during the whole year, they were able to adopt out 978, and I'm sure you guys do equally great work. Everyone does equally great work throughout the whole county, and I want to thank you for everything you guys do, and congratulations. Legislator Agastakis, thank you so much. We totally support your bill. Um, I can't tell you, or I can tell you actually, how it will impact what we do. Having this bill, which basically will create an animal abuser registry on the county website, will give us a needed resource to know that when we're doing a background check on a potential adopter, that we are not adopting to someone who will eventually hurt and injure or kill that animal. So I thank you so much for presenting that. And I wish, I hope, and I pray that the legislature will approve that and it will go forward and make Orange County stand out among all the counties. In addition to that, I do believe Orange County is the only county that recognizes that April is Go Orange for Animals, Prevention of Animal Cruelty Month, and that's statewide, so I thank you all for doing that as well. Um, and I, just to let you know that I didn't pick the color, the ASPCA started this several years ago. They picked orange. We're just going with it, even though it doesn't look well on anybody. Um, but it is Go Orange, and I ask you to either display a ribbon or wear an orange ribbon for the month of April. And when somebody asks you, what's that all about, you can share and make them aware that it is prevention of animal cruelty. Thank you. Well, I want to start by thanking the legislature for considering Rocky's bill. But the real thanks goes to the Humane Society. They do an incredible job with very meager resources, and they deserve every bit of support you can give them. Thank you, Susan.
Okay. I just have to say, first off, um, um, Jason, you and your family, your mother's a great mom, your father's a uh, great father, you're a great brother, and you get an A++ for content in that speech, and you get another A++ for having it on orange paper. That was impressive. <laughs> and Warwick Humane Society, don't apologize for orange. That's my favorite color. So I'm a broken record with that. Russia, Lumber, Tennessee, and Orange County, so you, you can't beat it. Okay, uh, Majority Leader Bonasek. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve the minutes of December 4th, December 18th, 2014, and January 6th and January 23rd, 2015. Are there any referrals to central withdrawals? Oh, okay. Thank you. I move to vote collectively on item numbers 25, 26, and 27. Are there any referrals, consents, or withdrawals? Yes, Legislator Benelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I respectfully request that item number one on the agenda, which is local law introductory number two of 2015, a local law amending local law number eight of 1968, known as the Orange County Charter, and local law number 10 of 1969, known as the Orange County Administration Code, as previously amended, providing the consolidation of the Department of Inform Information Technology with the Department of General Services be withdrawn and referred back to committees. Second. Any objections? Oh, granted. Okay, communications A, receive and file, and B, receive and file, correct? Okay. Reports? Uh, I have another one, Mr. Chairman. I'm okay, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry, Legislator Benelli. <laughs> I also request that item number 13 on the agenda, which is a bond resolution authorizing acquisition and installation of furniture, fixtures, equipment, and information technology improvements for the Board of Elections and Information Technology <coughs> Building and the 1841 Courthouse and Annex Building, stating that the estimated cost thereof is $300,000, appropriating said amount thereof, and authorizing the issuance of 300,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation be withdrawn and referred back to committees. Second. Any objections? Okay, so granted. <coughs> okay, number one, resolution number one. Number two, I'm sorry. Okay, number two. Legislators Ikes, Cheney, Berkman, Kemnitz. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature regarding the removal of PCBs from the Hudson River. Discussion? Legislator Berkman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, say hello to Mr. Sassy and all the students and youth in government on behalf of the Democratic Caucus. Uh, welcome again this year. Also, I'd like to say hello to the best public school teacher on planet Earth, Marc Marcia Matthews, also known as my sister Marcy. The former mayor of Goshen, too, don't forget yeah, that. That's true. Sure. Take care of the mayors, you know. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, please, Mr. Chairman, add all the Democratic Caucus as sponsors to this resolution. And I'd also like to thank Mr. Ekes for his leadership on this environmental issue. Okay, do the Republicans want to go on, Melissa? Okay, and I'd also like to thank Legislator Cheney for working with Legislator Ekes on this. So. Okay, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Kemnitz? Kulisek? Padue? Kraskevich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vero? Wong? Gresham? 20 ayes. Okay, resolution three.
Legislators Chemnitz, Bonasek, and Benton, resolution of the County Legislature of the County of Orange pursuant to the New York State Constitution, Article 9, and Municipal Home Rule Law, Section 40, sending a home room request to the New York State Legislature seeking enactment of a Senate bill and an Assembly bill for a special law pursuant to New York State Tax Law, Section 1210, extending the three quarters of 1% increase to the sales tax rate. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Amo, yes. and Agnostakis, yes. Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Padu, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, Gresham. 18 ayes, one no. Okay, resolution number four. Legislators Bonasek, Chemnitz, Kulisek, resolution of the Orange County Legislature pursuant to New York State Election Law sections 3-302 and 3-420.1, approving the salary schedules for election inspectors, voting machine technicians, voting machine operators, poll clerks for nursing homes, poll clerks for court orders, polling place coordinators, polling place information clerks, select polling place interpreters, post-election audit clerks, inspector training, green bag pickup and warehouse, delivery and voting machine pre lat for the election year 2015. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Yes. This just refers to the salaries, not to the split, or is the, the monetary contribution is not in this resolution? Correct. Bonasek, Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, <laughs> Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, Russia. 19 eyes. Okay, resolution number five. Legislators Berkman, Bonasek, Amo, Benelli, Heinz, Kulisek, Hemnitz. Resolution recognizing April 15, 2015 as Holocaust Memorial Day, Yom HaShoah. Jeff. Yeah, thanks uh, for preparing this to the staff once again this year. I appreciate it. And uh, all the Democrats would like to be acknowledged as sponsors. Okay, Melissa, Michael. Oh, you're on there already? I'm sorry. Okay, okay roll call. Bonasek, Amo. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSavo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vera, Wong, of Russia. 19 eyes. Resolution number six. Legislators Ruskevich and Kulisek, resolution of the Orange County Legislature assuming lead agency status under the State Environmental Quality Review Act seeker with respect to the Orange County Runway 321 RSA Improvement Project and Goshen Wetland Mitigation Site, classifying the action as a type one action and determining that the action will not have any significant adverse environmental impact. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek, Amo, yeah. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, Russia. 19 eyes. Okay, resolution number seven. Legislators Kulisek and Padu, resolution of the Orange County Legislature giving notice of intent to assume lead agency status under State Environmental Quality Review Act seeker with respect to the Orange Farm number two bridge replacement and making a preliminary determination that this project will be classified as an unlisted action. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek. Berkman, no. Chemnitz, Kulisek, Duke. Ruskevich, Sullivan, Carmel, Bureau, Wong, Russia. 16 eyes, 3 no's.
Okay, another bond res resolution number nine, requiring two thirds vote. Oh, I'm sorry, number eight, I'm sorry. Legislators Benelli, Riskevich, Benton, and Kulasek. Bond resolution dated April 10th, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the partial reconstruction of the Department of Public Works garage in the village of Goshen, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 450000 appropriating 300000 therefore, in addition to the 150000 previously appropriated, and authorizing the issuance of 300000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? Berkman? No. Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Pines? Hemnitz? No. Kulasek? No. Paduk? No. Riskevich? No. Sullivan? No. Turnbull? No. Bureau? No. Wong? Gresham? 13 ayes, 6 no. Resolution fails then, correct? Okay. Okay, on to uh, bond resolution number nine. Legislators Benton, Benelli, and Turnbull. Bond resolution dated April 10, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing acquisition of machine, machinery and apparatus for construction and maintenance, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 1224225 appropriating said amount, therefore, authorizing the issuance of 122423 bonds of the county to finance a portion of said appropriation and authorizing the expenditure of 1101802 expected to be received from the United States of America towards the cost thereof. Discussion? Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Legislator Kemnitz. Actually, it's called reasonably expected which when you're spending a million dollars or more, I think is a very important definition change. Which, are you on the first page or second page? Um, on side, number nine, it has two sides. If you're looking, What's, if you're looking at, you look at what we have here, the cover sheet. The cover sheet. And the word is expected. But if you look at what we get as the other sheets, you find that it is reasonably expected. Okay, expected to be received in the last sentence, right? Yeah. Expenditure of 1.1 million, blah, 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 expected to be received. Yeah, it's, not, it's not as definite as it appears to be initially. Okay, is that also in the bond it's resolution? section number four. Yeah. Section number, no, you see where it is, number four? Is your request to add the word reasonably? Into the first, yeah. Well, I'd like the word to be understood in, a, in what reasonably does to the word expected, so I don't know where you would add it. Do you want to put reasonably expected in front of, or reasonably in front of expected? You yes. want to make that amendment? We can do that without a problem. It won't impact the, the, the substance of the bond. Okay. okay. Announcement. Oh, excuse me one second. Mr. Sassy, you're, you're leaving. Have a great day. Thank you for coming. Have a fantastic luncheon. Always good to see you. I'm not going to make it today. It's a little tight with the other duties. Thank you. Sibling day. Okay, Myrna, I'm sorry. Okay, so that's a motion. Point of order. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the question and probably to our attorney is, I'll hold up one second. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, at the point of order here, and the question probably for our attorney, the, the question probably that should be asked is, uh, and maybe it's to the point that uh, my colleague, Ms. Kimnitz, is trying to make or uncover. What actually got passed in the committee that brought this resolution to the floor? Because that should be the wording we have in front of us for the vote. Uh, if I just cl can clarify, a, a legislative request is prepared uh, by uh, at the for this particular project by the uh, Commissioner of Public Works. Um, he's not versed in uh, the bond resolution um, requirements uh, that we have special counsel that the county executive hires uh, for bonding purposes. Uh, so the, the legislative request uh, says resolution making a supplement, I think this is it, uh, making a supplemental appropriation to the capital project's budget in the amount of 1224225 for FEMA alternate project fleet replacement. Um, so that was the language used, uh, but that, that's a layman's terms, so it's not uh, the legal terms that are required uh, pursuant to the state finance law uh, and local finance law. So this document you have before you is prepared by Bond, bond Council. Um, I, I believe that if we added reasonably expected, it would not impact the bond resolution. Uh, it's just, uh, uh, just adds more, uh, I, I, I would say adjectives to the to the bond resolution, so no okay. impact. Thank but it clarifies that. for purposes of the legislature uh, uh, of the intent that we, it is reasonably expected that we're going to get this money. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. Chairman? Chair. Chairman? Yes. Um, when you say adjective, an adjective modifies a noun, right? Uh, it's a clarification word, and I think it's an important one because it, had, it pertains to money. Okay, so it's not a term to just be thrown to the side. So can we make yeah, that? Yeah, I, I would suggest, okay. on this subject, okay. Okay. You're going to make a motion on it? I'll to, make a motion To that, add that word. To add that word, and it also occurs in uh, section one. Is there a second on that? Okay. On this on this subject, Jeff? Okay, Jeff. I was going to second it, but I guess I got beat to the punch. Uh, I just want to uh, say that, uh, of course, it's all depending on our attorney's interpretation. Of course, she'll run it by bond counsel to make sure that we're clear. And then I'd also, I know the county executive must review all these documents before they're bonded. I, I'm sure you do that. And I want you to please take a, a, a close look at some of the comments that were made by those that attended in the audience about the legality of various concerns that they had about this, uh, just to make sure that we have that clear and take care of my Middletown homeboy today, will you? You got it. <laughs> okay, let's get a, uh, I'm going to take a roll call on the uh, Myrna's Amendment. Roll call. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay. Now on to the bond resolution. It doesn't change the content of the bond resolution, basically, so. Uh, uh, discussion on the bond resolution? Okay, roll call. Honest? Yes. Ned Mustakis? No. Benton? Yes. Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? No. Turnbull? Bureau? Wong? Brescia? 17 eyes, two no's. Okay, another bond resolution, number 10. Legislators Ruskevich, Benton, Kulsek, bond resolution dated April 10, 2015, bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing Orange County Correctional Facility cooling what tower replacement, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 450,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 450,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion? Yes, Legislator Turnbull and then Cheney. Yeah, I'd like to, uh, thanks Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the work of uh, Jim Kulisak and Mike Paduk on this and 
for me it served as an example on how we can improve the process something that we focused on in our caucus the other evening um, you know, uh, we many things come before us and sometimes we just need more information and this was an example of how that should work um, when the uh, information was requested uh, Commissioner Vibrock uh, came back at the next meeting, I believe actually it went physical services and then ways and means, and he had the additional information requested. And uh, I think the result was that we got, uh, um, we, we made some changes and we did something that uh, in the long term is gonna result in uh, money saved uh, for the county. So uh, this is an example of uh, for me, how the process should work, and I'm pleased to see this adjustment made. Okay, Legislator Chief. Uh, thank you, uh, Legislator Turnbull. You uh, mentioned a number of the points that I wanted to make. Uh, originally, this was proposed as uh, um, a, a, a renovation to just uh, spend about $250,000 to renovate it. Um, instead, we've got uh, through the, the efforts of both legislators and uh, the DPW staff um, have come up with a, a replacement, and that replacement is going to provide us with enhanced safety features that are going to protect our employees. It's going to give us a five-year warranty and a more efficient system. So I think uh, all in all, everything uh, worked out for the best. Thank you. You two gentlemen took the words out of my mouth. Because I was going to say the same thing. I was going to thank Jim and Mike for their input on this. And Commissioner Vibrock as well, because he admitted that he wasn't thorough enough with the bidding process, came back very well prepared in the subsequent meeting, told us how this is going to be much better bang for our buck. So I thank all three of those gentlemen in the, in the committee for looking at it, and uh, um, let's move forward. <laughs> yes, Legislator Ben. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I just wanted to make the comment. Uh, sometimes uh, in tight situations with money, I mean, everyone's concerned about the dollars and taxation, but uh, sometimes we try maybe too much to put a Band-Aid on something rather than really spending what we should and fixing it properly and doing it right. And this is one of those instances. Okay, roll call. Honest, honestly? Honestly? a little lower. They muffled you a little bit. That's it. Amo? Yes. Yeah. Akastakis? No. Benton? Yes. Berkman? No. Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Gaduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Fernbull? Biro? Wong? Brescia? 17 eyes, two no's. Okay, other bond resolution number 11. Legislators Ruskevich, Turnbull, Benton, and DeSalvo. Bond resolution dated April 10th, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing bridge rail upgrades countywide for the Department of Public Works, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 50,000, appropriating set amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 50,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Honestly? Yes. Amo? Sure. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, Fresh, 19 eyes. Number 12, also a bond resolution. Legislators Ruskevich, Turnbull, Benton, Hines. Bond resolution dated April 10, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing bridge painting <coughs> countywide for the Department of Public Works, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 150,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 150,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonacic? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? <coughs> Berkman? <coughs> Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, Brescia. 18 ayes, 1 no. Okay, 13 was withdrawn, number 14, also bond resolution. Legislators Benelli, Biro, Benton, DeSalvo. Bond resolution dated April 10, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, 
authorize an acquisition of equipment for county solid waste transfer stations, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 488500 appropriating set amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 488500 bonds of the county to pay the cost thereof. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? <coughs> Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Piero, no. Wong, Brescia. 18 ayes, one no. Okay, number 15, another bond resolution. Legislators. Oh, I'm sorry, it's regular, regular uh, resolution. Legislators Benelli, Kulsek, Benton. Resolution making an appropriation to the 2015 Orange County budget for the Orange County Department of Public Works pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? You want to be added, Jim? Yes. Definitely. Okay. Oh. Okay, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? Berkman? No. Benelli? <coughs> Cheney? No. Dillard? DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Padu, no. Ruskevich, Sullivan, no. Turnbull, no. Vero, Wong, Gresham. No. 13 eyes, 6 no's. Motion fails. No. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Jeez, I'm really getting screwed up today. I'm sorry. Okay, so I see all these two-thirds here. 16, I'm sorry. Number 16, which is a bond resolution. Legislators Benelli, Kulasek, Benton, and Turnbull. Bond resolution dated April 10, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing acquisition of various equipment for county park facilities, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 100,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 100,000 bonds of the county to pay the cost thereof. Discussion. Okay, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? Berkman? Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, no. Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Padu, Ruskevich, Sullivan, no. Turnbull, Bureau, Wong, Brescia. 16 eyes, 3 no's. Okay, number 17, which is a bond resolution. Legislators Benelli, Dillard, Benton. Bond resolution dated April 10, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the construction of improvements to the Veterans Memorial Cemetery, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 1,200,000, appropriating 150,000, therefore, in addition to the 300,000 previously appropriated, and authorizing the issuance of 150,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Discussion? Roll call. Honestly? Yeah. Amo? Yes. Anandastakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vero? Wong? Brescia? 19 eyes. Yes, I certainly can. We certainly can. Uh, number eight. Yes, if you want to be added. Okay, Jeff, Roseanne, White Paduk. Okay. We're 18, right? Another bond resolution. Put us all, all the Republicans want to, and Michael Amo. Okay. Anybody that doesn't want to be on it? Okay, everybody's on. Good. 18, bond resolution. Legislators Bonasek, Ekes, Benton, and Hines. Bond resolution dated April 10, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing construction of recreational area improvements to the Orange County Correctional Facility, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 75,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 75,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagastakis? No. Benton? Berkman? Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, Brescia. 16 eyes, 3 no's. 
Okay, number 19, simple resolution again. Legislators Bonas second DeSalvo, resolution confirming the reappointments by the county executive to the Orange County Police Advisory Board pursuant to section 18.07A of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? You want to vote on them separately? The top one's a little suspect or what? <laughs> Roll call. Bonas Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Kulisek, I'm sorry, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, Brescia. 19 eyes. Resolution number 20. Legislators DeSalvo and Ikes, resolution authorizing the county executive to accept donated computer equipment on behalf of the Orange County Sheriff's Office pursuant to section 215 of the county law. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Hemnins? Kulisek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, Brescia, 19 eyes. Resolution number 21. Legislators Bonasek and Paduk. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County District Attorney's Office to accept additional grant funds from the New York State Department of Criminal Justice Services pursuant to section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Roll call. Yes. Bonasek? Amo? Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vero? Wong? Brescia? 19 eyes. Resolution number 22. Legislators in Agnostakis and Benton, resolution authorizing the county executive to execute an agreement with the Commissioner of Transportation for the people of the state of New York, conveying parcel of land in the town of Montgomery along with a related temporary easement being taken by the state and to accept payment for the same in the amount of $1,200. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Amo? Yes. In Agnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, Brescia, 19 eyes. Okay, resolution number 23. Legislators in Agnostakis and Benton, resolution authorizing the private sale and conveyance of certain county owned lands acquired by reason of a failure to redeem said lands from a tax sale to Orange County pursuant to section 10184 of the Real Property Tax Law and Orange County amended local law number two of 2010. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Yes. Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, Brescia, 19 eyes. Okay, resolution number 24. Legislators Bonasek, Anagnostakis, and Ikes. Resolution appointing members to the Board of Health of Orange County Health District pursuant to sections 343 and 344 of the Public Health Law and section 7.04 of the Orange County Administrative Code. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, Brescia. 19 eyes. Yes. Yes, you can. Uh, resolutions 25, 26, 27. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? 
Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, and Brescia. 19 ayes. Resolution 28. Legislators Cheney, Dillard, Bonasek, and Ikes, an act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to reallocate dietary services supervisor at the Department of Residential Health Care Services pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, Brescia. 19 eyes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is clear. You want to be added to the last one? Yes, Jeff Burke. I'd like to thank the legislature for being so attentive today. Okay, I got you. I'd like to thank the legislature for being so attentive today when I made a mistake, and there were a few. You were right there to correct me <laughs> in unison. <laughs> so, yes, Roseanne. Oh, added. I'm sorry. Okay. Anything else? No public participation after the meeting? Motion to adjourn then? Desk is clear.